all righty what is going on ladies and gents welcome back to the channel for another market update hope everybody's having a lovely day and with that being said get into the ta all right so we are going to start here with these smaller time frames and work our way up to the daily time frame and we will call it a day all right so first things first we're going to start here with spy i want to point out you will have lost levels this morning you have found support on other levels this morning and then boom we have reclaimed some of those levels by that i mean we dropped below here 437.57 which was this low over here you then fell down to the next level at 435.32 which was the low right here found buyers stepping in there reclaim this level all right so you broke and then retested this and then we actually currently also have a break and retest going on of the 439.80 level right there and you could see this is where sellers started stepping in here and over here for your double top i do want to point out above here we do have the door wide open to coming back up to the 443 to 444 zone so that is why i want to start here with the smaller time frame just so we can like you know establish that that is completely on the table at this current point in time now let's step over to the daily time frame and check out what is going on over there. So don't mind all the lines here. All right, those are just the levels. Let's actually just clean up the chart real quick and I will re-add those as we need them. I'm going to point out we currently do have a hammer candlestick forming on the daily time frame. Now it is only 2.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so this can change by the end of the day, but I am going to point out as of right now, this is the psychology behind this candlestick is bullish. Sellers took you down. They were not strong enough to hold you down. Buyers then said, nope, nope, sellers, we're, com we're coming back up. And now you are at the high of day. So in my opinion, this is a bullish candlestick going on. This is bullish that we are seeing this happen, especially over here on QQ. You do out a hammer candlestick, and it happened off of the low of that day over there. I do want to clean up the chart again over here on QQQ. Um, but yeah, you got a hammer going on in SPY. You have a hammer going on in QQ. I do want to come over here to IWM and also point out you have a very large hammer candlestick going on over here. You do have a very large wick to the downside, and you are holding on this trend line right here. So until this is lost, we really don't have any reason to be concerned. And I do want to point out where buyer stepped in here. It was at the low of day from the 18th, so last Friday which is that's an important spot for buyers to start stepping in they want to defend that you come down to the hourly time frame you could see you had a very nice uh doji uh dragonfly doji going on right here or a hammer candles like whatever you want to call it you got it going on there in the perfect location you very quickly reclaim the low from over here so um i'm just going to say right now bulls are still in control right now and if we come over here to spy if you see a break above this high guys this is your higher low and we could very well above here start heading up to 44811 and then 45155 which is that would be the back test from break it down all the way over here now we do know this is a heavily traded spot we could really put a zone here and go a little like that and you could see how many touch points we have we have one two three four five six seven so you had seven candlesticks all lining with this exact spot here i'm just pointing it out if we get up there i think it's likely that that's where sellers would step in now i'm going to reiterate what i've been saying i still do think we are going down to 431.19 but i also fully acknowledge that a lot of people thought that we would be going down to 430 which is why uh, in the weekly update, I remind you guys, just like I have been, guys, until certain levels break, we have no reason to get perma bearish. I mean, we never have a reason to get perma bearish or perma bullish, but until certain things happen, it's absolutely crazy to be calling for things like SPY 420. You had to see what was going to happen at 430. And as you see right now, we could very well be making a higher low here and then going on our way. Now, we did have Jackson Holt today, so let's talk a little about that. All right, Jerome reiterated, in my opinion, he reiterate, reiterated exactly what he's been saying in the past few FOMC meetings, which has been like, hey, all right, we significantly are reducing the size of our balance sheet and have already done so. The inflation target remains 2%. Economic conditions may call for more tightening. Those, those are really the three things that I got out of today that I've also gotten out of the past two three FOMC meetings. So nothing really has changed in the language which means, A, there's no new fear catalyst to go off of in the market. And again, I'm going to remind you guys what I did in the weekly update. Bears, if you are not satisfied with the 6% drop over here in SPY, I don't know what to tell you. All right? 
until you start doing some damage to this, all right, you got to break 431.19. That would put in on the weekly time frame. That would put in a new low, all right? Your last major low is over here. Now, if we were to come up here and break the high, we would know the, the next major low that we put in on the chart was right here. And when everyone was getting perma bearish down here for some reason, even though there was limited downside until you start breaking down below 431.19, well, guess what? That was ultimately where we could see a major low get put in. So I am just pointing it out. All right, you don't have any crazy volume on the week, so I want to point that out. It's not like anyone is in control, but you do have a bull shrammy candlestick formation at the current point in time. And at least you could, unless you come down and uh, really take it under, what is this? Let's see where the close was over here. 460 uh, to 436.50. Unless you can come down here and break that, by the end of the week, by today at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, to guess what? You have a bullish Ramey candlestick formation here on the weekly time from the last one over here led to that. All right. So I, I just want to. Oh, wait, never mind. That's a bearish. That's a bearish Ramey candlestick formation. You had one going on over here. That was the last one. I was I was reading the candlesticks completely bass backwards. There we go. My apologies. All right. Uh, regardless, that is what you have going on here. All right, and after this bearish engulfing candlestick, we did see a decent amount of more downside. Now, again, I, I didn't think it was going to be a crash. It doesn't look like we got a crash over here. It doesn't look like we got a crash over here. Now, you know, QQQ's candlestick, you can't say bears were in control this week, right? You could see this right here. You have an inverted hammer. So, or a shooting star candlestick, whichever one you want to call it. You got a, a big upper wick that does show that buyers took you up sometime throughout this week. And guess what? They were not strong. Sellers pushed you right back down. You do have increasing volume to support that candlestick. So, there is that. All right. Now, I do want to bring us over to ES and I want to point out you had buyers step in exactly on the low over here. All right. You very, very well held this level. And that was somewhere you really wanted to see. You could see it over on the four-hour time frame. Long wick coming from there. But you can also just see it on the daily time frame. We had buyers step in at the absolute perfect level. All right. You could not get a daily close over here. You could not get a daily close over here. If you, if you start closing underneath there, guess what that is going to open the door to? 4302.50. 4, 4, all right, so 4302.50, that will be the next level that we will be paying attention to under this level right here. And guess what? That's another 1.5% drop. That would align with SPY coming down here and coming somewhere into the zone. So I am going to point that out. All right, futures are slightly different than the uh, ETF we go over. And then you also have SPX. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying, guys, bulls are not showing that they're just extremely weak, like a lot of people probably want to be happening, and I'm just making it pretty clear what's going on here. Come over here to DIA. You also have a hammer candlestick going on with a bullish harami candlestick formation, and uh, you're holding it in the exact perfect spot. On the weekly time frame, guess what? You still just have this back test going on of the zone, the breakout zone that we've been paying attention to. So, um, you know, guys, until you really start... Seeing this thing get ugly and losing this over here on DA. Guys, this literally is just the back this we were talking about up here. All right, so that is that. Now I am going to come over here to Apple, and I'm going to point out on the daily time frame, things are also looking not so bad over here. What's going on? You are, again, reclaiming this 177.33 level that we got from over here. All right, you were bobbing your head, you know, your, your feet. You were jumping up and down over here. You lost it. You almost got down to this next level, 171.09, which I think is the open of this candlestick. Um, yeah. And then you got back up, broke, retested it, and now you have a hammer candlestick stemming right from that level. So, again, things don't look so bad. And if you do see Apple do something like this, all right, what is that going to tell us? All right, once you break above here, that's going to show us that this was your higher low. And then you have a higher high. And then I would say we're probably coming up to this 186.60 level. All right. We did have the daily RSI oversold on Apple for quite some time here. If, if you've been watching the channel, you know we were looking for a big bounce on Apple. I think we are finally getting that big bounce on Apple. Did it happen lower than we could have, you know, imagined there? Yeah. All right. But you just got a $10 move over here on Apple. I think we are seeing that play out. And I think there is probably more upside once this thing really gets rocking and rolling. Again, you just got to break the high of day over here, which was 181.55. That is a level we could be paying attention to. There we go. 
And with that being said, I will close out this video. Everybody have a lovely weekend. I will check in with you guys tomorrow for the weekly update. And then we have a Sunday live stream where we will cover some setups going into next week. So stay tuned for that. If you are new to the channel, I'm glad to have you here. We are a growing community here. We will keep growing. And um, yeah, thank you for being here with me. I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.